Finally, so um, you know, I'm gonna get into you know, we always got a little, we got our little tradition where we got to get get a helmet catch story out of you. Okay. It was dope. 2020 hits, pandemic hits, and um, I'm out of the front office with the New York Giants, and we opened in this clean juice store in Morristown, and I'm telling you, Pete, I, it was this dude who was just showing love. And you could just see the love in his eyes. And that's Chad Kimsey. He was always on point, stepping in the clean juice, grabbing him a little wrap, a little smoothie, a little something, something. So I appreciate it, man. I had to make sure we got, got your story and brought you to the table. Man, always, always, always. This is our little formality and tradition. You got to give us a little helmet catch snippet. Where were you the first time you ever saw the helmet catch? What do you remember? Any story you got? I was actually visiting Atlanta. Okay. And in a friend of mine was the... Uh, Huge Giants fan. Okay. He passed away. Oh, was it like shortly yeah, after? He's from Queens, but he was living in Atlanta. Something happened. He got, got it. He, he passed away. And um, me and some friends went to a sports bar. Okay. And the Giants hit the Super Bowl. Yeah. So he's a huge Giants fan, diehard, everything. So we in there, you know, we in there for him, and we in there because it's New York at the same time. So okay. we, we, in, we in the sports bar. And a friend of mine goes by the name of John. We seen the helmet catch. Yeah. He literally runs out the, the right. He literally just took off down the block running. Just go. Yeah, and we was like, and then and then we got the win. So it's like at the same time, it's like, you know, we felt like that was a moment that it was him and yeah. then you, and then it was just it was a good moment. Oh man, yeah. see that's 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 why I ask it, man, yeah. because um, just through the years, so many crazy stories and for different people at different vantage points, mm -hmm. but. Connecting it to somebody that really held meaning, yeah. families cried through it together. It's it's dope stories like that. Big man. moment, big moment. Oh man, yeah. that's huge. I love it. All right, man. So tell me, man. Like you know, so always on point. I, I caught you on the gram. I eventually, like, man, I, I don't even know if I found you on the. Oh, you, you know, you probably posted and showed us some love. And so I go through the gram and I see a picture with, with you and DJ Khaled. I'm like, okay, what's going on? <laughs> what's what's going on here? You know, so. Uh, talk about, you know, just some of your journey. Obviously, you do, you know, you do management, right? And I, and I know you have a background, but, you know, obviously, this is the creative generation, right? We're in a digital creative generation, and there's so many opportunities for anybody to get on the road and create something for themselves. Talk about how you found yourself in this niche and what, what drew you to it. And yeah, take your time. Take it dates your time. back to, you know, just the love of the game, and, you know, I'm going to share it here, but... You know, the entire, I've been in the game for about 15 years. Okay. Not even DJ Khaled knows that my aunt is legendary Roxanne Shante. Yeah, yeah. So, growing up, I just, you know, go to events with her, go to the shows with her, and I kind of broke away from that, and I was going to networking events on my own. Mm. So, you know, nowadays, everybody's famous. <laughs> So, but back then when I was going to certain events and things, you had to be who you were. You had to be that was dude. No social media, it was none of that. <sighs> so I always knew that, you know, you have to provide a service. So mm. I came up doing promotion. And yeah. I always knew, I always liked what DJ Khaled was doing as far as like working with everybody, his unity, sure. his, his energy. Yeah. Just all of those things that come with him. And... I started promoting his work. Mm. And I would always make sure wherever I was, it was somewhere that you had to be. Mm. No matter how much money it took, travel-wise, I always put myself in a position to be where I needed to be. Mm. So I kind of like you could say I invested in myself. That's good. And, you know, I knew the vision. I always, you know, I knew the vision where I wanted to go, climbing a ladder. So I came in. You know, he's not, I can't just say, hey, I'm Chad. This is what I do. Okay, nice to meet you. Sure. But I came in on a level where it was like, you know what? I'm going to provide a service, and I'm going to make you like me. Yeah. <laughs> so that was what I did. I went hard. So whenever I, he would go to this place or that place, I was there. And he was like, yo, I just seen you in, how'd you get here? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it, was, it. was like no choice. You kind of had to. Yeah, respect yeah. that. So I put myself out there. I promoted and. He had other artists, Ace Hood at the time, and, you know, affiliated with Rick Ross and yeah. everything else. So I just always 
position position myself to be there. Uh, you talked about um, the, definitely the legendary Roxanne Shante. Mm -hmm. So where's the origin story? New York, Jer New York. All right. So what was it like? You know, like and, and like I said, I don't try to romanticize any, but what was what was the upbringing like? What cultivated some of that awareness, hunger, um, that that kind of led you not just into the industry, but kind of gave you some of that awareness? Because you talked about positioning, you talked about persistence, you talked about already investing in yourself. And this is. This is really how anyone is going to find some measure of long-term success. So, what you know, what was what was life like growing up that kind of cultivated some of that hunger? Just being surrounded by music, just mm. you know, just the love for it, the drive for it, and the culture. Yeah, yeah, we, we all a part of the culture somehow, some way. No doubt. Um, so it was just you know, just I seen myself there. Yeah, I believed in you know, watching her doing her shows, and you know what. I could take some of that and put it with me to do that. 